need Scotty, more power. More power. Ugh. So my paramotor climbs pretty good. I can't really complain about the performance, but I know that it's been better and I kind of rely and pull my feet up early, relying on that power to be there. I mean, it's more than you need, but it's really nice to have. I mean, ask anybody with a sports car, right? I also noticed that I've been having some trouble with starting. And so on one of my pre-flight checks, when I discovered that one of the exhaust springs was broken, I was like, dude, it's time. I'm just gonna tear this thing down and do it right. And that's what this video is about. You may have seen on the internet when people have a dirt bike that's two-stroke that blows up or the chainsaw video that I did, it blew up, it scratched the cylinder all to pieces. Uh, back when all the dirt bikes were two-stroke, it seems like every year you just replace your piston. It's just what you do. Um, this is a two-stroke piston. You can tell right away because it's got a couple of big holes in the skirts and then it doesn't have any oil rings. It only has two compression rings. This is the way that a two-stroke engine works. It's got a bunch of holes and ports in the cylinder that allow the intake to come in. Uh, these are intake holes where all of the air fuel mixture that's in the crankcase comes in through these holes, bypasses around, and then comes in. You can see that that one's the exhaust side. Fuel oil mixture. It has oil mixed in to make sure that you get the lubrication that you need since there's no oil in the crankcase. It just goes with the fuel through the bottom end of the engine here, and then it goes through these ports and then onto the cylinder and above the cylinder as you see here. Uh, now these pistons and the cylinder, they have a special stamping on them. You can see where it says A right there. That means that it's a certain size. Usually A will be the tighter size and then there will be B's or C's. However it turns out it'll uh, get one of those designations. And then you have a piston and it's also stamped with an A which means it's a certain size. So I'm going to show you the new ones here in just a minute. Uh, but you can see the scratch is a vertical scratching and scoring on this. Uh, that's piston slap. As the piston wears out, it'll slap up against the side. Uh, the cylinder also gets some wear. It wears more slowly. You can see a bunch of scratches that go this way, and that's okay. That's called cross hatching. Uh, that's what happens when you uh, hone a cylinder. You use something like this on a drill, and you just scratch it. And you're supposed to make little X's. They should be you know kind of a uh, diamond shape on its side but then you also see scratches up and down and that's what we're going to try to take out those scratches up and down cause you to lose a little bit of power you just want to clean that all up so that's why we got the hone there for if you replace your piston before it fails and really has a bunch of damage to it then your cylinder will last a lot longer cylinders Usually, you know, like on a dirt bike or something, they could be as much as fifteen hundred bucks. Or a new cylinder for this is about five, six hundred dollars. The piston is about two hundred and fifty dollars. If I'd have replaced this piston earlier when I bought it, I'd have been a lot better off. But I didn't do that, did I? No. You can see it's got a little alignment pin. That's where the end of the opening of the piston rings come together. You can see the intake holes. Just want to stick your fingers in. It's like a knight's helmet or something. Fair maiden, I will save you. Something like that, right? You see the difference. This one's ready to be retired. So we got the new one. So we're going to get a real good look at the scoring that you have here. None of it is very deep. It's pretty superficial, uh, but established. And were we to continue with that other piston, see those are actually pretty bad. Usually you get the worst of it at the exhaust side and things blow out right here. This has a coating on it. Typically they'll use something like Nicosil. I know Honda uses it, BMW uses it. I just take some red line two-stroke oil. Think of it as like when you're doing machining you use cutting oil. You're cutting a line in the cylinder. You don't want to go too deep or cut too bad. You want to lubricate it. This helps get all the little stuff to stick on here and get out of the way. Seems like whoever honed this just kind of fell asleep on it in one position. If you have them at an angle it seems like you have burned less oil, but on a two-stroke, nobody cares. You can definitely overdo it. This is good enough. I could probably throw it together. I'm going to put a little more oil on the stones after wiping them off, and I'm going to go one more round, probably. There's some professional machinist that knows more, way more than I do is looking at me and being like, dude, hurry up, or you're doing it wrong, or this would be better, or oh my gosh, I can't believe you're putting this on the internet. And, you know, if that's you, tell me the right way to do it. 
this is the way I was trained. It worked pretty good for me. I'm always open to learning new things. Let's wipe it off and see if we still have those lines. Now, if we can't get those lines all the way because they're all the way through the Nicosil, then we don't want to. We don't want to remove all the Nicosil. We just want to get just enough to where we get a good seal so we have good power. I like power. Don't you like power? So that's actually looking pretty good. You can still see those two on the intake side just a little bit. But I'm going to leave it. I'm going to kick myself out and say that's good. All right, well, let's get this cylinder put on over the piston. If you got lots of lube on it, it's going to be great. It's going to work fine. If you don't, it's going to fight. You can see that our piston rings are lined up on those little pins here and here, and they're facing the right way. When you push it in on the pin, the pin's at the top, so it all gets along happy. You got to make sure that that's going on on both of your piston rings. If you're tricky and you've been there, done that, you can withdraw it back down into the cylinder a little bit, your engine, whatnot, and do it down here. If you do it down here, you can turn the prop, and the prop will help you to push uh, the piston back up into it. I'm going to push it up and down, and I'm going to squeeze on it, and then I'm going to hold this in place and let the piston go up by turning the prop, and then let it come back down together. Just give it a little wiggle. And voila, we're in. You can see this is a Viterazzi. Awesome, awesome motor. Piston, I would do some design changes. I don't know why they make those little circlip things so deep. I've got a separate video on that. But make sure that everything's cleaned out of this. You can take a dental pick or something and just make sure that everything's cleared out. So you can see the piston's in there. If I hold this snug, we're just going to run that around a little bit. Let's make sure everything's going smoothly. Isn't that cool? Gives you an idea for how fast that little heart's pumping when you're flying. Pretty cool. You can see all the oil that's accumulating here. It's doing its job. So this is the way it goes. You can see that there's an extra chunk here and here. So we're going to install this like that. So I just take this little O-ring and just press it into place. I just do this dry because if you get it wet, sometimes it can roll up and not seat properly. Make sure that everything on this surface is clean so that you don't have any gaps or any compression leak or loss. That looks good. So we'll put this on. Ideally with something like this you want to replace all of your washers and all of your nuts. You can see one of the washers came off but the others didn't. Just make sure everybody gets the washer. And then go back through with your nuts and you tighten your nuts down to 16 Newton meters, 17 Newton meters. That's what it says. You want to tighten these on opposite sides. So with the torque wrench, you can either set it to 12 foot pounds or 16, 17 newton meters. Tighten it until it clicks. Of course, I'm going to tighten them down pre that before the click. Get them to where they're just inch pounds tight. Is it necessary to be this meticulous with it? Nah. But the way I fly, I want this to be perfect. So that's what I do. So just tighten it until you hear a click. And stop. Go to the other side. And continue. So they shouldn't rotate anymore if I go back. So you go straight to the click. And after it clicks, don't make it go farther after that. This looks good enough. Anyway, that's how you put the cylinder on the Viterazzi Moster or pretty much any other two-stroke engine, whether it's lawn care, aircraft, or whatever. There's two phases of the break-in period on this. The first phase takes like two hours to do, and there's a whole bunch of steps and cool-down times in between. A lot of people don't do it, but I've heard at the ground school that I went to that it makes a big difference, and to just do it. So, here we go. I reckon if I'm going to be revving this thing up for two hours on and off on a Saturday morning, might as well go out to the airport and make some noise there. Ho <laughs> ho that starts so much better. So in this time lapse you're watching the last of the four sections that I did the thing on it. 
I didn't do the 15 minute cool down in between. I only waited, you know, about five minutes in between. This week's been pretty tight. Uh, as we speak, I'm in Los Angeles. I actually got this done back on Sunday. So I started with a full tank of gas. I did the break-in process, which takes about an hour. Um, this is what it looks like. It's basically you do uh, five runs. Each one you get higher RPMs and lower time frame. And then you just do that four times, just the whole set. So it's all done. It's all cooled down. Next thing we do is we check the spark plug, and then we torque this uh, to 16 to 17 Newton meters or I believe 12 foot-pounds. The other thing that you do is you change your fuel mixture. It's 32 to 1. Ooh, it's tighter. Not interesting. So you wait till it's all cooled down and you torque it again. These guys know what they're doing. That's pretty cool. You hear that first crack, is it uh, breaking free because it kind of cold welds? And then the second click is the actual torque. We'll just double check these. That's so cool. I'm glad that I bothered to read the instructions and do it right. And just double checking this last one. And again, after it clicks, quit it. Don't go further. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe. Bonus footage at the end. All right, let's go again.